Today I want to share the story of this fishing reel with you guys. The story is about how it was transformed from a piece of ocean junk into a monster catching machine that became one of my favorite reels for uh, trolling lures and for live baiting. And you'll be surprised to learn what the moral of this story is. The reel here is a Shimano Torium PG16 overhead reel. Our story starts a few months ago when Haitian and I were foraging mussels on a rocky shoreline. There happened to be a lot of rubbish stuck on the rocks and the oysters. So we began the good deed of collecting as much rubbish as we could find. Well, we are not too far away from Auckland actually and you can tell by the amount of rubbish. Some plastic netting, old soft baits just sort of washed up from the sea and then it ends up around the oysters. Over there, I can't reach that. By those rocks, there's lots of fishing line trapped on those oysters. Unfortunately, we can just try to take as much as we can reach. On the way back to the car, a larger piece of junk caught my eye and it was an old fishing rod. It even had a reel attached to it and you guessed it, it was this reel. Now look, there's an old fishing rod. And some old boots, yeah. <laughs> There's an old, old fishing rod in between the mussels, mussel shells. Got an overhead reel, a boat rod. Someone must have left the uh, lost this here. Take this with us. We don't want to leave the rubbish here. Oh, we collected ourselves a few nice mussels. Also, a little bit of rubbish. Fishing rod with reel and braid on it. An icky spike, some netting, fishing line, soft bait. Yep, I should have looked a little bit longer, maybe some more goodies down there. When we picked it up, it looked as if it had been submerged in water for a very long time. It was all overgrown with barnacles and full of salt water, mud and dirt. Now we took it home with the intention to throw it away. But when I had a closer look at it, it turned out to be a Shimano Torium overhead reel, which is a rather good reel and a fairly expensive as well. So I decided to take it apart and assess the damage. I was not very hopeful though, as I had a lot of reels over the years that didn't survive even the slightest dunking in uh, salt water. That's why I only use sealed reels these days. But anyway, there was mud, sand, barnacles everywhere and the reel was completely uh, stuck. You couldn't move it. And when I opened it up, to my big surprise, I could not find a single bit of rust or corrosion inside this reel. I washed off all the dirt, scraped off the barnacles and soaked all the parts in vinegar. Then I cleaned it with baking soda and a toothbrush. It started to look a whole lot better. The rod, however, looked somewhat brittle and I decided to throw it away, which I deeply uh, regretted later on and you'll soon find out why. Well, I don't think I can save that rod that looks a bit rubbishy but had its day still thinking it might not be worth all the effort i put it away in this disassembled state and uh, somehow completely forgot about it and then a few months later i remembered the reel and i thought i'd give it another chance and try to reassemble it after another cleaning session with some solvents and some wd-40 the parts looked pretty good actually i looked up the schematics online and i started to reassemble the reel and then the most annoying thing happened one of the internal springs that are holding the drag in place flew off it disappeared outside underneath the wooden deck where i was working on and despite a lot of effort i could not find the spring anymore really annoying so i went to hunting and fishing in kai Taya and gave them uh, the part number and these guys immediately ordered a new spring from me and these guys here at fishing and hunting and kai Taya, they're so good they organized a new spring for me. They didn't even charge me for the shipping. It only cost me $4 to get a new replacement spring for that reel. I got some real grease as well. Now we're just gonna have to uh, put the reel back together and catch a fish with it. These guys that work there are incredibly friendly and helpful. Anyway, equipped with a new spring, I now was able to reassemble the reel. What can I say, guys? It worked. I couldn't believe it. It spun easily. The drag was smooth and everything was just you know, working fine. So I really wanted to try it out on the kayak, uh, but there was now one big problem. Remember the rod that I threw away earlier? Well, that's it. I threw it away and now I didn't have an overhead rod for this reel anymore. I totally cursed myself because probably the only thing the rod needed was a good cleanup and a new rod tip. <laughs> 
and I decided to just buy a cheap overhead uh, rod uh, by Shimano that matches this reel in strength. Now having the rod and reel, I couldn't of course wait to head out on the kayak to catch a fish. On the first outing, pretty much the first cast, the hook got snagged up on a rock and immediately the braid broke under very light pressure. I realized just how stupid I am and that I should have taken off the, and replaced the first 100 meters or so of the old braid that was on this reel as this was probably all damaged by those overgrown barnacles. I got home and are now equipped with a new braid. I went out again trying to catch kingfish on live bait. That's what this reel is made for. Oh yeah, we got a nice live bait, perfect size. And it's on my restored reel. Check this out. And I've got it now set to free spool. And then uh, here's the strike setting. In case I get a fish, I will get notified by the clicker and then I just have to crank up the strike setting, the normal drag basically, and uh, the fish should be on. Well, I didn't end up catching a kingfish on live bait, but this fairly big hammerhead shark instead, and that put the reel to a very good test. Did you hear that? Something is working on that live bait. Oh shit, it wasn't a kingfish, it was a shark. I think now this time we hooked the shark. The hammerhead. Now this could be a prolonged fight, guys. Uh, that is the first time I'm actually hooking onto a shark from the fire. Oh, it is a big shark. You can see the shark now. Whew. Not a small shark, it's a big shark, guys. I had no problem stopping the shark and bringing it to the side of the kayak for release. <sighs> uh, what an exciting first test for this reel. I was totally stoked. And then the next thing I tried was trolling some lures with this reel and I caught a small kingfish and also a fairly big oh, snapper. No, we Both were on. super easy to bring in. And this is how this old reel suddenly became my new favorite reel. And now the moral of the story is actually twofold, guys. Firstly, find and pick up rubbish when you're out there. Not only are you helping uh, the environment, but you might also be rewarded with a treasure. And the second moral, Shimano Torium reels are of amazing quality. I, there aren't many reels out there that would have survived such abuse and being able to catch a big fish afterwards. Well, what do you guys think about the story? Now leave us a comment and let us know if you have used the Torium reel before or what else is your favorite reel these days. We would love to hear from you and your comments, uh, your feedback, all your likes help us grow this channel. See you next time. As you can see, there are a lot of battle scars on this reel. And the handle has all these markings from the barnacles as well and the drag knob. It looks amazingly battle-worn. Who cares, right? Uh, this is actually makes this reel unique.